Hey, what's up guys? Footy Manager TV here. This is episode 11 of my Plymouth Argyle career. Today, we've got a league match against Southend at home. So being at home, I really think we can get a win here. I am actually really happy with how the team is. I like the defenders, very good centre-backs, plus the full-backs. Uh, they're good going forward with good passing and pace with Basira on the left side. And then midfield, really good passes. Then in attack, you've got Guerrero, Brosk as well, just signed him, good finisher. And see, so he gets past here, gets up, pretty good strength as well to do that. Finds Watton, then he's going to find Oliver Mitchell. He had a chance, but it rebounded off the post. Very unlucky there. When, when that happens, you know things may not go your way in some matches. And here we go. Might be evidence of that, as you see, with Hall with the ball here. He gets it. We win the ball very good, but, yep, they get it back. We try and win it again, but they cross it to the far post. We header it away, try and get it away, but their players are too strong. And they end up scoring through Spicer. I don't even know if these players are good or not because I'm not too familiar with this league and you can't blame me because being from Australia, they don't show these matches on TV. So it's really hard to know which players are the best or not. And I suppose I can say wait to January to buy some new players for the team. But with the, how I want to play with the team, we've got a lot of players that suit the formation now. So it really may be one more upgrade. Guerreri hasn't done as well as he thought, but he really suits it well. But I think I do need another winger, but Brosk can play there. But I really want to get Brosk... Okay, that was a penalty. I was going to say I need Brosk to play in the striker position, but we've got Lee Kont as well. Uh, I'm not sure why that was a penalty. It didn't look a penalty to me. Maybe I missed something. But anyway, Eastwood has the penalty. We're going to try and save it here. Thought he was going to go straight, but obviously he aims it in the really unsavable position that heaps of people go for. Even the AI at that really top position, just a little bit to the side, in between the middle and the right side. It's really un un um, unstoppable. That's the best penalty, really, where to aim it. Aim it high and a bit to the right side or left side, depending which foot they are. And Oliver Mitchell tries to get past with some skill there, which he does. And he's going to try and get the cross in. But once again, it was a pretty poor cross. And that was a penalty. Even, I didn't think that was a penalty. So something's up with this referee, in my opinion. But we're going to have to get our star man, Alex Bross, to take this penalty from Australia. And I also, I'm going to go for more Australians in future transfer windows to make it a bit more fun for me. And I'll be familiar with the players. But look at that finesse there. Perfect penalty. I've never done a more perfect penalty in my entire, entire FIFA career. That was just perfect. And from a 66 overall player. That was perfect, really. With the, He has the finesse shot trait, so that helps. But yeah, that was perfect. Even if you dive the right way. As you can see in slow-mo here, he just aimed it perfect. He wasn't going to save that even if he dived the right way. But in all honesty, it wasn't a penalty. We got pretty lucky, but hopefully you need that bit of luck when you play. And now we can maybe mount a comeback. Horahane stole the ball. Guerrero with the ball. He's going to try and play it again, but he was offside. Played it a bit late, and he finished as well. So that's a bit unfortunate. We could have went... Uh, it would have been equalizer just before the halftime break. But anyway, in the second half, we need to make some changes. Uh, bring on some fresh players. Hopefully, we can score a goal. And in the 65th minute, they got the ball. Benyon, um, again, we tried to tackle, but it just floated th to their player. Once rebounding to them. Hall with the ball again. Tries the shot right next to the keeper. Really... Our keep, keepers in this level, they should do better. Like, EA makes them so bad because they really need to make the big difference between the better goalkeepers. And yeah, it's not really balanced well. These keepers in real life aren't that bad. But anyway, what can you do? Mitchell with the ball again. He's going to be a superstar for our team. As you saw, winning the penalty or getting the cross for the penalty earlier. And he tries to intercept the ball there. Good. Made the... Defender under pressure, and here's Lacan on the ball. He's going to try and set it up for a teammate. Mitchell, again, gets past his defender and scores. Like I said, he's going to be a superstar, and if you keep scoring like this, getting good ratings, he's just going to go up, uh, rise attributes at a crazy level. And before you know it, he's going to be our best player. I think rated 63 already, only 16. When the scout found him, he had like over 80 potential. He was in the high 80s, like 88, I think. Go check out the first video or the second video for that. Anyway, it was good to get a goal back. But again, from the kickoff, they had a chance. He sh they should have played the ball earlier. They would have had a good chance. But very good intercepted uh, by Basira there from left back, coming into a more central role to intercept the ball to try and get us forward, trying to score an equalizer. Uh, through our guy Mitchell again. I really wanted to get him on the ball as it, he was really on form and it was he got a very another good rating in this match which was duly deserved getting his goal. Tried that one uh, one two play again but it just wasn't there as sometimes it's lacking because of the quality of the players and the first touch control and things like that. But then again, he, they were through on goal. I'm not sure what the, the uh, their attacker tried there. He tried to 
like jump over the ball or something. Anyway, it's back to Mitchell. He's going to try something in the 90th minute. There wasn't really much options on, so he tried to go for the goal himself, which was the wrong option. I should have tried to pass it, but what can you do? And here, I got pretty angry. As you can see, probably start slide tackling now. And yeah, I really shouldn't be... At least, I think we should be drawing. They got a... I guess, maybe even not, because we shouldn't even got that penalty. But uh, when you know those things have to happen, uh, there's something weird with this match. And yeah, obviously, I got angry with slide tackling everywhere. But yeah, I really couldn't help it, as I feel... I thought I got the ball there, but two, two players slide tackle. Try and slide tackle. Uh, I'm not sure. I was controlling the player who was against the defender or the attacker who had the ball. And then one of my other defenders decided to slide tackle one of the opponents in the box. But that's one of the things that happened in the game. And they're going to waste a bit of time at the end. And anyway, they have another penalty. And Eastwood, once again, will he finish twice? Yes, that time he goes forward. I guess the wrong way that time. But I guess the right way that time for the first one they did. But then he kicked it straight. So... Yeah, I was pretty not happy with this result. And especially, we have a next game in the Capital One Cup against Man City. Again, we got drawn against Man City. How bad luck is that? But that's the game. I suppose it's just the luck of the draw. So, But anyway, like I said, Mitchell, very good uh, attacking player for us. He's going to increase attributes. Wait till the end of the season. He's increased heaps, and I can't wait to show you that. And after that result, maybe I had to rethink my team. Maybe it wasn't ready yet. Maybe I don't have the right players. And yet, we've got a game against Manchester City, Capital One Cup. I have no idea how I'm going to get a result from this match. At least it's ha at home, so hopefully we'll get a bit of the gate receipts for that. But yeah, I don't see me winning this match. It's going to be too hard, even if there are a couple key players on the bench, such as Aguero and Silva. But we'll see what we can do in this match. And I actually was really happy. This was a way better performance. Again... That was a pretty poor effort from Tevez, but very good. Uh, well done by the keeper, Jake Cole there. He really forced him to go wide with the shot. I would have liked it if I had an easier team to play in just these early rounds. But like I said, it's just the luck of the draw. And I would have preferred to get someone so we could at least go to another, like the next round and maybe then get a harder team. But sometimes it's bad luck, but I guess we still got the FA Cup to come. Hopefully we can get a bit of an easier draw and try and get a better run in that. And that one you get a bit more finances or you get a bit more money for winning and going through the next round. And here, good pressuring. He just decides to walk backwards and then give us a corner for whatever reason. And actually, earlier in the game here, we had the better of them, really. We forced them into a lot of pressure, forced clearances. As you can see there, they're forced to clear it out. We were applying the pressure high, and really, it showed. We created a lot of chances, but really, we couldn't finish early. Uh, we had quite a few chances, as you can see here, but not really the option. Defender's too strong, as you can see there. But once again, force it out for a throw-in. But unfortunately, we couldn't capitalize on our early dominance. And here, Rodwell with the through ball to Tevez. And he really had a chance, but he couldn't finish. Good defending by Blanchard again. And back to Toure. Really a good defending positioning again. They took the shot, but it was never going to trouble our keeper. And again, in defense, they're forced the clearances. That's around my formation as well. Good possession of the ball and high pressure. And here, they had another chance, but very good positioning by Becerra to not really give Mike on a chance. I'm not sure what he's doing up there. It's so hard to score against a team like Man City. So I actually would rather lose in 90 minutes than get keep 0-0 zero, zero for the whole match and our players get more tired if we have to play extra time. Because honestly, we're not going to win these cup competitions against because we're going to have to eventually play good teams like this. And eventually we will lose. So I would rather lose early uh, if we're playing against a good team if we don't have really a chance of winning. Because it's just going to affect our fitness and affect our playful promotion for this season. And for whatever reason, when you're in lower leagues, your players get affected by fitness more. And it doesn't even matter if they have good stamina or not. I think EA put something into the game like they have invisible coaches. And when you're in a lower league, your fitness coaches are worse or something. It definitely has something to do with that because not when you're playing as a top team... You never get like really orange fitness in one match. Like you'll see when I try and make substitutions later in this match, a lot of our players are tired. And yeah, that, that they don't get affected that much when you're a top team. So I definitely have to look into signing players with good stamina to make that really as best as possible so we can have enough fit players as we try and go for promotion, try and see what money we have in January. We went in at halftime nil-nil. We're still nil-nil at the 66th minute, but now they're, start, they're going to start to bring on some of their better players like Aguero, Silva, those kind of players. Nazri as well. They're not even starting. Even Vincent Company didn't even start. So they, their best team wasn't on the ground. So we had a better chance uh, than we normally would, I guess, if they had their best team. But anyway, look, Gail Clichy, he's too fast. 
And really, we're never going to get a goal with those fast players in defense. But if you check that out again, Bodorov was like 15 meters in front of Gail Clichy, and he caught up to him basically just in a couple seconds. Uh, but yeah, I guess that's it, it should happen because of Gail Clichy's pace. Uh, but I think a little bit the pace is not balanced, but look at that fitness, look at the energy. That wouldn't happen in a Premier League team, not at all. And it's not like those players have terrible fitness uh, or terrible stamina. It's just because, like I said, in lower leagues, the invisible coaches that EA uh, give to the teams, in lower levels, they naturally just make it lower for whatever reason. And if you don't know if that's true or not, just test it out yourself. Try a career with a lower team, and the fitness, it really impacts more, because I'm sure most people be top teams. And yeah, people who are experiencing career mode would agree with me. But it does add to the challenge. It does make it more fun when you have to play your maybe not as good players. And yeah, it forces you to rotate, which is good for the balance of the squad, the happiness of all players. And as we make our three subs, they bring on the man, Aguero himself. He's going to be the difference in my opinion. He's probably one of the better strikers in the game. After a really good season last year, he got upgraded a bit and he got clinical finishing. Again, that first touch wasn't good by our striker there. It was good one-two play, but like I said, the first touch isn't good enough. But looking at the match as a whole, this has been a fantastic performance by us. We're ha Man, Man City still hasn't scored against us uh, 80 minutes into the game. So that's been fantastic. Even if we concede a late goal, this is still re an excellent performance. Way better than our last match against Southend. But here, Brosk with the ball, or Brosk gets the ball, and he... Really, a wasted chance. Should have got that on target. And again, they're going to make another attacking sub. Yaya Toure going off. They're going to bring on Samir Nasri. Which then, they didn't really have much in defensive midfield. So then, maybe we might try and get a goal late. And just see what happens. But that when they're in attack, it's going to be dangerous as well. So we've got to be mindful of that. So I thought I might as well go on attacking mode. Because I'm either going to win or I'm going to lose if I do that. Here, Leconte. He finds Gorman. A chance, really, on his opposite foot. If that was his left foot, he might have had a chance. But unfortunately, right foot weaker. I tried to actually win a corner, aim near post. But I kind of failed there. And it just went back to the player. And they're on for a counter-attack here. With Gail Clichy down the wing. Coming a bit inside here. But very good tackle by Darren Purse. He's 35 years old. But he's performing very good for a central defender. And I really thought we should get something from this match. You play fantastic. Look at the strength from Leconte there. Gets the ball. Landed to Gorman. He's going to find Leconte. Here was the golden chance. But he couldn't put it away. That was a very good chance. One-on-one -on -one with Hart. But he couldn't put it away. It was a tight angle. It was pretty easy for him to save, I guess. But here, we went ultra-attacking just to try and pip a goal here. Cohen Hall tried to play it back to him, but he would have been offside if they got it. But I think that was the game there. Lucky, because they could have counter attack and it could have been the match. But regardless of the very good performance, this is the result I least wanted. Because the fitness is just going to really be a big factor in the next couple league matches. I would have just rather lose 1-0 in normal time than lose in extra time. As I here, Aguero with the ball. And when you give him a chance, he doesn't miss. Like I said, he would have been the key... Key man, if he just got he got one chance and finish it, finish the goal. Uh, he's just a superstar in the game. Doesn't really miss when giving a one on opportunity, one on one opportunity. But saying that he's a cheat as well, as you can see there, sticks his leg out when I try and throw it to my player. And yeah, I had respect for him until that moment, but not anymore. That really gave up all hope for winning the match. Then I gave up. Then I just thought to myself, it's good to focus on the league. Uh, yeah, so we can just focus on pro promotion after this really, uh, po this was a positive performance despite the result. Uh, as you see, if it was just a, f a normal match, we would have got a point from this match against a te the team that's probably favoured to win the Premier League and we're in the lowest league in England. So that was a really impressive performance. Uh, that's really what I took from the match. It was a really good performance. Though having lost the last two matches, that's going to leave the morale of the team low. But the uh, morale shouldn't be low after this match. We had a fantastic performance. We had a chance here. But when this happens, you know it's not your day. You had a shot. And hit the post once again. Happened two times in the last two matches. So what can you do about that? Also, I play on semi-shooting. So that makes it a bit hard getting goals. But yeah, um, that's the thing I do. And I just hope you enjoy watching a very good performance in this match. So leave a like. Subscribe if you haven't yet. And I'll see you soon with some more matches in this series.